Enter. This is News at 8. Hello and welcome to the Prime Time Bulletin on Joy News and on Multi TV. This bulletin is also available on ABN on the Sky Digital platform, channel 235. Ahead in the bulletin, research by the Graphic Communications Review, media practitioners abuse their own code of ethics more than 800 times within a month. Parliament thrown into a frantic debate over how much of NHIS levy has been released to the NHIA as Health Minister goes through a hard time getting his answers right. Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association asked the National Communications Authority to scrutinize the financial muscle of prospective media owners before issuing them with frequencies. And over 700 households to benefit from a 4.9 million Ghana cities disbursement by the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty program this month. Our Nigeria army said to have recaptured the northeastern town of Mubi from Islamist fighters Boko Haram. All of these plus sports and showbiz and international news coming up shortly. Do stay. The details now. Issues relating to the release of the National Health Insurance Levy to the National Health Insurance Authority, NHIA, generated heated debate on the floor of Parliament today. Minister of Health, Dr. Kweku Ajima Mensa, who revealed that an amount of 540 million cities has so far been released to the authority, was not sure how much money is in arrears for this year. We are still making noise in the house. If you want to make your house noise, go and make it outside this house. Speaker of Parliament Edward Doojao had a tough time controlling the house Thursday morning when the Minister of Health, Dr. Kwekwajiman Mensa, who seemed not to have all his facts readily available, took his turn on the floor of Parliament to answer questions pertaining to his ministry. His inconsistency in answering questions relating to how much levies have been released to the NHIA and how much money is an arrears raised tempers, especially from the minority side of the house. He mentioned two figures. As he says in the Minister of Finance, he mentioned another figure. Tell us how much has been released for you. You said up to April, how much was released to you? The 882 million was in respect of receipts in 2014, out of which only 550 relates to the 2014 fiscal year. I challenge the, figure, the, speaker, uh, the minister that these figures can be correct. You cannot release, you cannot release money up to uh, April, and it's 540. The queen the areas is 880, and he says that up to April it's 540, and up to November 10th the collection is 700. The difference is 7 million. Mr. Speaker, can be correct. Mr. Speaker. I don't have all the information, so I will simply say that I will consult and get back, since it is not a substantive question. If the minister were not going to come back, I would, I would have pushed for that angle. But the minister said any time that his, his program, he will come back and reconcile all these figures, including this one. So, hold your fire. Meanwhile, members of parliament have adopted the report on the Interstate Succession Bill 2013, which seeks to better the current law, PNDC Law 111. Members of parliament from both sides were united in adopting this bill. Mr. Speaker, sometimes they lock up the whole building and the women and their children will have to go and stay with their friends. I think that with this new bill, lawyers and judges will have much power to deal with such cases when it comes before them. The committee had challenges in addressing issues of cohabitation in the new bill, but members of parliament are setting of dealing with that issue soon in the property rights bill, also before parliament. 
And the Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association is calling on the National Communications Authority to request for a minimum capital requirement when allocating frequencies. For the association, several frequency owners lack the resource and capacity to run their stations, giving room for unethical practices to thrive as a means of uh, sustenance. Since the liberalization of the airwaves, the National Communications Authority has allocated about 354 radio frequencies, out of which 291 are operational. The authority has also licensed 125 TV channels, but only 72 channels are functional. This, the Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association believes, is not sustainable for a middle-income economy like Ghana, as the operations are capital-intensive. I think we cannot sustain... Uh, 300 radio station industry in this country. I mean, our economy is not that big. And so what happens is that you have radio stations that cannot retool, that cannot train their people, that cannot build capacity, that cannot pay their staff. And so you have a lot of stations with staff who are not paid. They are not on the payroll. They go out and bring stories and they carry them because they cannot pay for content. And so if we don't see it as business and say, okay, the economy, we have a frequency plan for to support our great, maybe we have four agri stations to support our economy we have four business stations for our politics we have this number so we do a frequency plan some of the rules that I think should be put in place is raising the capital bar so that before you go into the industry there's a minimum capital requirements the banks are doing it so why don't we do it for the media once we do that I believe it will sanitize the system and through that we can build enough capacity and this issue of Soli here people going out there I mean for brown and We'll, we'll go down. For Geba, the move amounts to a ploy to kill media freedom. A lot of media houses are struggling because we are all fighting for a small kitty. Advertising budgets are being cut all across and more radio stations are coming on stream. So what happens is that, I mean, what, for example, maybe Joy could get last year, they can't because now there are four or five main other players in their category. And yes, competition is good, but then we, we can't have competition forever. If that were the case why do we have only four mobile telcos why don't we then open it up to 200 mobile because of the capital needed you cannot meet that so in the same way with broadcasting we have to have a capital ceiling if you want to come into the industry you have to be able to invest you need a bank to guarantee that you'll be able to sustain the business for some time and not just buy a transmitter and then think that you are a broadcaster Abigail Adamakwenchi for Joy News a research conducted by the Graphic Communications Group on Media Ethics has revealed media practitioners breached the GJA Code of Ethics 803 times in just a month. Media watchers are therefore asking journalists to uphold integrity and selflessness in their work. Graphic conducted the research on media ethics between September 2006 and September 2014, monitoring keenly 1,072 stories from the media findings of the NMC for the month of September. It revealed 85 stories were fabricated and untrue, over 139 stories were also not comprehensive, while more than 214 stories fell short of ethical principles and balance. In the context of the GJA Code of Ethics, the research showed a 100% breach, a situation with speakers at a roundtable discussion on media ethics condemned. Our money, the Media Development Fund, was used to give out cheap, low-cost, uh, unsellable laptops to a few journalists who rushed to collect. Some people got two. What happened to their in intrapersonal ethics at the time they were collecting the laptops? The Ministry of Information at their, by that action behaved unethically. And the journalists who collected the GJA also behaved unethically. Sometimes newspapers publish sheer fabrication and tarnish people's reputations. Sometimes the things journalists say on air when they have the privilege to be part of a discussion are simply not edifying. Sometimes you see clear pornography on front pages of newspapers and you wonder, you wonder whether the papers thought for a moment how those things offend public sensibilities. 
and how or you also wonder whether the media are aware of their role of educating the masses and preserving our national values and culture. I am unwilling to surrender my humanity to an envelope. What about you? Are you selling your birthright like Esau ignorantly did and suffered the consequences of the blessings of his father Jacob? Or you are willing to do what is right so that even if you do not get material reward, you will get the reward in another form. President of the Salt and Light Ministries, Dr. Joyce I, while bemoaning an ethical media act, also called on regulators to use frequency allocation as a means to ensure ethics in the profession. In the media, we are professionals, and all professionals pride themselves about the dignity of their profession. And the dignity of our profession is that we must act, report only what is the truth. We must minimize our, we must act independently, and we must be accountable and transparent. That is what gives us dignity. But can we link media ethics to frequency allocation? Should one body perform this function of frequency allocation and ensuring and promoting the adherence to ethics? How transparent can we make the frequency allocation process? And finally, how can transparency in frequency allocation ensure an ethical media landscape? She also called for transparency and fairness in frequency allocation, adding the need for the NCA to provide clear guidelines to help in processes of allocation. Abigail Adamakwenchi for Joy News. And recent statistics indicate that there are about 4.5 billion mobile users worldwide. Over 2 billion people are said to be using smartphones with 2.9 billion internet users sending over 7 billion emails in a day. Ghana is among the countries in the sub-region which has come a long way to embrace technology. Three years ago, messages had to be delivered by courier, either on foot or by horseback. Technology began to reshape our lives with further developments in the 19th century when cable telephone was invented. The acting executive director of Data Protection Commission, Teki Akwete, bemoaned the rate at which individuals abuse technology, which he says led to the establishment of the commission to implement and monitor compliance with provisions of the Protection Act. What we do is monitoring the implementation of the law. How do we do this? We do this by making sure that large collectors and processors of personal information are registered with us. And for ordinary people and the ordinary citizens, you may be able to go online and then search the register. So if, for instance, you're dealing with a particular um, individual or company, you may be able to go to our site and then search the register to see if that person is registered with us. Apart from that as well, if there is any threat to your personal information, you will be able to go online and then report that complaint to us. Communications, Atu Sapong said that the building to house the ministry was under construction and will be completed in no time. He went on to announce the official launch of Data Protection Commission, which comes off on November 18. As regards the data center itself, it's progressing well, and uh, that is being supervised by NITA, uh, the Director General is here, and that is progressing well. The racks are coming in, the generators are done. So the data center as it is should be done by the end of the year. But the property as you see uh, sitting there uh, will be done by the 31st of January 2015. So based on the project plan that we have, uh, the National Data Center, both the primary one in Accra and the secondary one in Kumasi, should be ready and available uh, for use uh, by 31st of January 2015. Tackle issues of unknown callers will tend to harass the privacy of data mobile phone users. You're watching the primetime news on Joe News on Multi TV. You can also watch us on ABN Sky Channel 235 in London and across Europe. We have more news for you. 
Welcome back. Now, Joe News' Seth Kwame Boateng was a guest speaker at the ongoing second Global Sickle Cell Disease Congress underway in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. A hotline documentary he produced earlier this year titled Pain from Cursed Cells won him an invitation to speak at the Congress. In that documentary, Seth looked at how sickle cell, which is a purely medical condition, is rather seen as the work of witches in parts of the Upper East region of Ghana. Professors, uh, medical experts and researchers are attending this global meeting. Seth Kwambwating was the only journalist invited to address the plenary session of the meeting. Here are excerpts of his presentation. The story I'm about to share with you is from some of the deprived areas in my country, specifically the Upper East region of Ghana. There, as I mentioned, not all of them believe sickle cell is a medical condition. They believe the pain is so excruciating, only witches can cause people to suffer this. That's the map of Ghana. And according to the, the, uh, the WHO, 18,000 babies are born with sickle cell every year. And 95 of these do not live up to or beyond their fifth bad days. So this is a typical rural area in my country, the Upper East region of Ghana. And here we call this place Zuarungu. And here, sickle cell sufferers believe supernatural powers inflict that pain on them. So painful stories of some people living the disease in this part of, the, of Ghana. And I investigated this and I did a documentary and I titled it Pain from Cursed Cell. Pain from Cursed Cell. They believe the pain is because the cells have been cursed. Now, a new technology is helping reduce maternal mortality in the northern region. The mobile phone-based technology is being used in four project districts in the region by an ungovernmental organization, Savannah Signatures. The project also aims at reducing child mortality and improving maternal health care. Ghana is lagging behind in attaining the Millennium Development Goals 4 and 5. Statistics from the Northern Regional Health Directorate indicate in 2009, 96 women died during delivery, 88 in 2011 and 130 in 2012, and 70 women from January to June 2013. To help remedy the soaring problem in Northern Region, Star Ghana in 2013 supported Savannah Signatures with a grant of $220,000 to reduce maternal mortality in four districts in the region through a developed technology-based mobile telephony in four project areas of the Kumbungu district, the Yendi and Sabalungu municipalities, as well as the Tamale metropolis by the end of December 2014. Project Officer of Sexual Reproductive Health Rights of Savannah Signatures, Abdul Rashid Imoro, told journalists some health facilities in the northern region had recorded zero maternal mortality due to mobile phone technology the NGO had introduced in the area. In the Yendi district, as we speak, there is still zero uh, maternal mortality. And last year, when we started the program, they also drastically reduced the maternal mortality issues in their hospital by three. And so the program has really impacted a lot in the area of reducing maternal mortalities in these health facilities. And that is why Savannah Signature thinks that this program must not end with the, uh, in December when they start Ghana support for the program. He also said Savannah Signatures was able to help achieve the feat because it had provided expectant mothers with weekly short message service in English and voice calls in Dagwani for those who cannot read and the technology gave timely information to expectant mothers on information about their state of pregnancy. A report by Hashmid Mohammed. Over 77,000 beneficiary households on the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty program LEAP in 103 districts in all 10 regions across the country are set to receive their disbursement totaling 4.9 million Ghana cities from November 17 to 21. The amount, which is part of government's social intervention program, is to promote the welfare of the 
vulnerable and marginalized in society. Through the LEAP program, government is improving the lives of its citizens, reducing poverty, and increasing the socio-economic standards in the country. It's, it's, it's a household grant, so it depends on the number of people, eligible people in, a, in, in the household. If you have a one-member household, uh, uh, it is uh, 24 Ghana cities per month, but it is paid by monthly, every two months, so that would be 48. Two-member household is 30. Three-member household is 36, so by monthly it will be what, 72. And four and above member household is 45 Ghana cities, so that will be 90, uh, uh, 90 Ghana cities every two months. Past this, amounts are linked to certain macroeconomic indicators. So once there are changes in those macroeconomic indicators, it triggers uh, the need for revision. Uh, discussions are underway to get this amount uh, revised. To ensure effective and efficient coordination, planning and implementation of the scheme, the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection has announced it will from next year begin a graduation scheme for some beneficiaries. Graduation model of the LEAP and as I speak the Director of Social Protection um, with his team they are, they are uh, almost up with a plan on how to do the graduation model so that those beneficiaries who can be graduated would then be what graduated that is something that will be done uh, 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 next. The Ministry says it will from 2015 roll out the entire electronic payment across the region. Electronic payment is the ministry's latest innovation in the cash transfer program aimed at reducing transaction costs for government and recipients. We've also piloted electronic payments. So some receive by, and that is our ultimate goal. We want to move to electronic payments so that you will not be forced to come immediately. It is really to take your money. At your convenience, you go to mobile money and then you take your money. We the November payment is the 33rd cycle of payment to beneficiary households on the Empowerment Against Poverty program. Members of the Axim Youth Association and leadership of the Ghana Private Road Transport Union, GPRTU, have embarked on a massive demonstration to protest the bad state of roads in the Axim municipality. Meanwhile, the paramount chief of Lower Axim, Awulai Ati Brukusu, has caused the arrest of three of the demonstrators who locked up his vehicle and prevented him from leaving the town. Axim is an Asian town and the capital of the Nzima East municipality. The town is plagued with major challenges, including the bad state of roads, which is a common feature in the municipality. The main road leading to Axim Township is in such a deplorable state which commercial drivers use as an excuse to charge exorbitant fares to the detriment of residents. This has angered the youth in the town who collaborated with the leadership of the GPRTU to demonstrate. The over six hours demonstration halted all business activities with vehicles prevented from operating. Stranded passengers had no choice than to walk to their various destinations. The demonstrators clad in red blocked the main road leading to the town and ended up blocking the vehicles of the paramount chief of Loa Axim, Awulai Ati Brukusu, who had to call the police to intervene. Three of the demonstrators were arrested in the process, which got the demonstrators more angry. They then invaded the Axim police station and demanded the release of their colleagues who were arrested. stormed the municipal assembly in their numbers but met the absence of the MCE. As a result, they submitted their petition to the acting coordinating director and gave them a two-week ultimatum to ensure the roads are constructed or rehabilitated, failing which they threatened mayhem in the town. Solomon Levy Ishan is youth leader and he spoke to join news. Peter Park Christi Eshun also explained the roads have already been awarded a contract and are awaiting the arrival of the contractors. No, 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 
But I went there. I'm on the Twitter relation here in South Germany. So we have to send him. Yes, to the Yes, send him back to the Abang Rest. So what's on the some of the angry residents also spoke to Joy News. Our roads are very bad. We don't have any good roads in Aksim, no, no, which is defaming the character of Aksim Township. So the government should look at our roads and to reconstruct or construct. We need renovation in Aksim. Correspondent William Benjamin Peters report for Joy News. <laughs> And here in Accra, my name is Stephen Antia. You're watching the Joy News Primetime Bulletin on Joy News on Multi TV. You can also watch us on ABN Sky Channel 235 in London and across Europe. Up next is business. in the monetary sector of the economy have expressed mixed feelings over the pegging of the policy rate at 21 percent the central bank thursday tightened the policy rate from 19 percent leaving most analysts shocked as they expected the rate to stay same rebuffing the central bank's claims that interest rates will not change the analysts project interest rates will not remain the same Explaining its stance, the Monetary Policy Committee says it is as a result of the high risk to growth outlook. Nonetheless, it does not expect the banks to increase their interest rate accordingly because the Bank of Ghana will still be lending at 18% to the commercial banks and borrow at 24% per the interest rate corridors set. Between December 2013 and September 2014, Interest rates generally went up on the money market. For instance, 91-day instrument increased to 25.5% from 19.2%. Subsequently, banking industry players who spoke with joinees are not convinced interest rates will stay safe. Senior Vice President Strategic Planning and Research of the Royal Bank, Dr. Kwame Banyako, has been explaining on News Desk. Let me be honest. Uh, I think the... Treasury bill rate is a more realistic uh, mm. uh, yardstick uh, because uh, that's the, in practice that's what they do. Uh, that's what, how how the central bank w w practically uh, lends to you at uh, virtually the the treasury bill rate. In that case, uh, changes to the monetary policy rate probably do not mean much if that is what happens in practice. Because now probably the banks would rather borrow from themselves. And so that's why you see, for instance, mm. the interbank rate is lower currently as uh, per the central bank's own figures. The interbank rate is lower than the, the treasury bill rate. So if the central bank will give you money at the treasury bill rate, you might as well borrow from your friends. And so the policy rate then becomes irrelevant in decision making. But they also fear that the policy rate realistically does not solely determine the lending rates of commercial banks in practice. Suleimana Mohammed is a financial researcher with Ecobank Development Corporation. Surprised because we probably expected it to be maintained, mm. uh, but the decision they made is understandable. Um, you, you, it, and it also highlights the risks to the outlook for the city and also inflation. But when you look at it holistically, uh, banks' lending rates are being influenced by their cost of funding. And the, the sources of funding goes beyond what they borrow from the central bank. For instance, with uh, interest rates going up and treasury bill rate likely to go up tomorrow, what that means is that people who deposit with their banks are also going to ask for higher rates mm. on their deposits, which will raise the cost of funding for banks. And what, when that happens, they have to reflect it in their lending rate as well. The central bank is optimistic that mopping up of excess liquidity, among other things, will help reduce the level of inflation from the current 16.9% to 8% with a 2% margin of error by first half of 2016. The Deputy Upper West Regional Minister, Dr. Mohamed Alpha Mushebu, says Ghana would soon become a global competitive service economy and the world's destination of choice for excellent service. In addition, he says a short-term strategy encourages the tourism industry to deliver positive and unforgettable service experience to all visitors by embracing the highest standards of excellence. Dr. Mohamed Alpha made the revelation at the Upper West Regional Tourism Awards Night 
Ingwa. Correspondent Rafiq Salam reports. The value of recognizing and rewarding champions of exceptional service is intended to raise overall standards in the tourism industry in Ghana over time. Acting Deputy Chief Executive of the Ghana Tourism Authority, in charge of finance and administration, Samson Donko, said the travel and tourism industry in Ghana has made significant strides over the last decade. Despite the success, Samson Donko holds the view that the sector continues to face substantial challenges. According to the Deputy Upper West Regional Minister, Dr. Mohammed Alpha Mushebu, there are plans to revamp the tourism industry to deliver positive and unforgettable service experience to all visitors by embracing the higher standards of excellence. Twelve organizations and individuals were awarded for the key roles they played during the year. They include Upland Hotel as the best second star hotel, Ghana at 50 Canteen for the best traditional caterer of the year, and first and last port as the best drinking bar of the year. The event was organized under the theme, Harnessing Our Tourism Resources for National Development. A a report by Rafiq Salam from WA. An internet retailing giant Amazon and book publisher Hatchet announced they have resolved a bitter dispute over print and e-book pricing. The two have been feuding for several months over a new contract leading Amazon to delay the shipment of several high-profile Hatchet titles. Neither firm announced the terms of the new multi-year contract. According to reports, Amazon had been seeking a larger proportion of the revenue generated from the sale of Hatchet's e-books while also attempting to lower the price of those books. And in a surprise move, Warren Buffett's Berkshire uh, Hathaway says it will acquire battery maker Duracell from Procter & Gamble. Last month, Procter & Gamble had announced plans to spin off the battery business. Beckshare would acquire Duracell via an unusual move in which the firm sells their $4.7 billion shares it owns in Procter & Gamble back to PNG. That structure will reduce the overall tax bill Beckshire Hathaway must pay. Also as part of the deal, Procter & Gamble will first invest $1.7 billion in Duracell in order to recapitalize the business. Procter & Gamble had acquired Duracell when it brought Gillette in 2005 for over $50 billion. However, as the company has sought to focus more on growth, it has started to shed some underperforming aspects of its business. Duracell leads the battery market with an estimated $2.2 billion in sales, but that figure has not been rising rapidly. Mr. Buffett had said over the summer he was looking for elephants or big brand name firms to acquire. That's all for business. leave Accra for Uganda in a few hours for their crucial 2015 AFCON qualifier against the Cranes in Kampala. Black Stars caretaker coach Baxwell Kunedu had a full house this afternoon at the team's final training session at uh, TP Mazembe midfielder Solomon Asante finally joined his teammates. Black Stars will fly out to Uganda from Accra tonight for a crucial 2015 Africa Cup of Nations qualifier in Kampala on Saturday. They are expected to arrive in Uganda at dawn on Friday to ensure that the players are rested for the evening's training session. Officials say they have concluded plans to airlift their contingent to Ghana immediately after Saturday's match at the Mandela Stadium in Kampala. The Black Stars are top of Group E as they travel to Uganda on 15 November before hosting Togo four days later. Ghana battle Uganda on Saturday afternoon in Kampala in a game that could well determine whether they will qualify for next year's Nations Cup with one match remaining in the group. The team is expected back in the country immediately after the match so that they could begin preparations in earnest for their final qualifier against Togo on Wednesday, November 19 in Tamale. 
Ghana know a win against Uganda in Kampala would see them qualify for the Nations Cup finals for a fourth successive time since hosting the tournament in 2008. Maxwell Kuneda will take charge of the two games before handing over to former Chelsea boss Abel Grant, provided he can agree financial terms with the Ghana Football Association. And Ghana's beach soccer team, the Black Sharks, look poised to test their raw but exciting skills against the world's best this December at the Copa Lagos Invitational in Nigeria. The 2014 Copa Lagos Invitational Tournament opening match will see debutants Ghana beach soccer team, the Black Sharks, face the might of a host nation, Nigeria, who are ranked third in Africa on December 12th. The annual beach soccer festival organized by Beach Soccer Worldwide has seen African beach soccer champions like Senegal, European champions Germany and five times world champions Brazil all take turns to thrill beach soccer fans in previous three editions in the Nigerian capital. Founded in 2011, Corporal Lagos is organized under the scope of the Beach Soccer Worldwide Tour, a FIFA recognized entity behind the creation and growth of beach soccer. In addition to the international dimension, the event aims to have a strategic role in developing beach soccer in Nigeria. Day two of this year's event will see the Black Sharks pitch themselves against Switzerland before playing neighbors Ivory Coast in the last round robin game. The three-day event will be the prime family event that celebrates every sphere of life, ranging from music, fashion, to entrepreneurship and sports, a complete package for every member of the family. With an influx of new talents from the Ghana Beach Soccer League, the Black Sharks stand to benefit immensely from the event. Ranked 71st in the world, Ghana's only previous show in a continental competition came at the 2013 Africa Beach Soccer Championships in Morocco, where they lost to host Madagascar and Senegal, but managed to score six goals. Other side attractions for this year's competitions include FC Barcelona locking horns with Pepsi football whilst Enyimba take on stationary stores. That's it for sports. The power of music to influence change around the world has never been in dispute. Drawing from this traditional music maker, King Ayisoba, is hoping to get African leaders to change their ways. The musician who recently returned from a tour of over seven countries tells Showbiz his new album has a song aimed at addressing this situation. Wicked leaders, people father, wicked leaders, people help you, you cannot do something better. Yeah, Bemewa, wicked leader, come to vote, promise people. I that is just a piece of King Aisoba's latest song, Bad Leaders. He explains how he wants to change the attitude of bad leaders across the globe and in turn advises them on how to lead. Okay. The title is a wicked leaders. Wicked leaders? Yeah. Wow. Who um, are the wicked leaders? Yeah, I think that the wicked leaders are... They know themselves? Uh, no. All of the leaders. Uh-uh. Yeah, if you be... Are you a leader present, yourself? Present, the leader of the work. I think that you have to do good, good are, you, are you a leader? Yeah, I'm a leader. Are you wicked? No, I mean, that's why I, <laughs> I play this song to advise all the leaders. You have to be a good leader. Mm. Yeah. Kina Isoba was kind enough to send a Christmas message to fans, encouraging them to stay healthy. The Christmas is coming at a, we are inside. Oh, the advice are also giving to my people. I think that Christmas is coming for the driving. I think that everybody is supposed to take time and uh, the drinking plenty. I think that it cannot help us. Mm. Uh, I think that the Christmas is coming up. Every, everything can be okay. Mm. His Kologo music, he says, is doing very well on the international music market. Good little thing about the good from dancing. That's it for Showbiz. Through the news bulletin at A. Before we go, a look at our major headlines. Research by the Graphic Communications Group reveals media practitioners abuse their own code of ethics more than 800 times within a month. 
and Parliament thrown into a frantic debate over how much of the NHIS levy has been released to the NHIA as Health Minister goes through a hard time getting his answers right. And Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association asked the National Communications Authority to scrutinize the financial muscle of prospective media owners before issuing them with frequencies. And over 700 households to benefit from a 4.9 million Ghana cities disbursement by the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty program this year. And in Nigeria, armies, the army said is said to have recaptured the northeastern town of Mubi from Islamist fighters Boko Haram. And that's all for the news. For more news, you can log on to myjoyonline.com and multitvworld.com. My name is Stephen Antti. Have a good evening.